The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Hello, everybody. It is Wednesday night, our Habits of Health call time, and I am so excited to be with you guys tonight. I am from New Orleans, Louisiana area, and um, it's such an honor to have you join me tonight. I am a client myself. Um, I have six babies. I'll show you a picture in a minute, and they are they're not all babies, they're 12 and under, and I am losing the baby weight from the last baby. So I am fully on program, I am in five and one, I am on, in fat burn, and I am ready to bring some habits of health tools and tricks and tips for you guys. So while we're waiting, we're letting people file into the room, I would love to know, tonight we are talking First, tell us where you're from. So I see the chat going. Tell me where you're from. Tell me um, how much you've lost on program so far. I would love to know that. Wouldn't it be fun to see how there's a thousand of you in the room right now, how much you've lost total? That would be amazing. But I don't have the math capacity to add all those right now. Um, so I will not be doing that. But I, um, I love it, I love it, this is awesome. If you are a client, I would love to know, just type in something, what's your favorite fueling? How about that? What's your favorite fueling? Um, and if you are a coach, I'd love to know your favorite thing about coaching. What's your favorite thing about coaching your friends and family to become the healthiest version of themselves? Let's type that in. Um, I'll wait for some responses. So tonight, we're going to be talking about overcoming obstacles. Um, as people are coming in, I'm going to just entertain you with a story. We just moved into this beautiful new house, and I went to start getting ready for this, and Charter had not finished setting up the internet. And my Wi-Fi, my box from Verizon was not reliable. So I am at my friend's house. We carved out a perfect corner in a room for me, and I am so excited to overcome obstacles and be with you guys tonight. So tonight we're talking about overcoming obstacles and how those obstacles aren't just something that stand in the way of you becoming the healthiest version of themselves. Those obstacles that you face on this health journey are actually the way that you become the healthiest version of yourself. And you're probably like, what the heck do you mean by that? Because that's what I thought when I first considered this topic. But this is what I mean. We're going to go into that in one second. Right now, so it's like the suspense is killing you, right? Right now, I want you to type in the chat. Tell me what is one obstacle that you have faced on this journey so far in becoming the healthiest version of yourself while using your journey to optimal health with Optavia, what's one obstacle you've faced so far? I remember for me, the first obstacle I faced was the scraps on my kids' plates. Well, the first day on program, there was a plate in front of me and there were goldfish on it and I was about to like throw it away and I realized, oh my goodness, I am about to eat these goldfish before I throw the plate away. How many mindless calories did I eat just by eating scraps on the plate? So I had to overcome that obstacle in pursuit of becoming the healthiest version of myself. So share those obstacles with me. Isn't it crazy how we all have some obstacles in common? So now this is, again, me, my husband, Trey Begin. He is a stud. He is out driving a big old van around with my six daughters, having dinner with them as a daddy-daughter date with six girls tonight while I get to be with you. I love both ends of that stick, so I don't know who has the better end. I love being with you. I love being with those girls. And tonight we want to talk about this. 
Marcus Aurelius said, the impediment to action actually is what advances that action. What stands in the way of your pursuit, whatever that pursuit is, becomes the way that you get to the end of that pursuit. So tonight we're really talking about our health journeys because we have a bunch of people on the line who are excited to get healthy. So what stands in the way of you getting healthy, which you just listed a bunch of those things on the chat, you can go through and see all those people, the things that you guys have seen as obstacles, overcoming that obstacle, that obstacle, learning to overcome it, becoming the person you become when you overcome that obstacle is actually the way that you are going to become, find and contend for a, a optimal health. Overcoming that obstacle is the way that you're going to become the healthiest version of yourself. So tonight, I want to just equip you with some tools that I use to become the healthiest version of myself. Some tools I use to overcome obstacles because they are everywhere. My life is full of obstacles. Our culture is exceptionally unhealthy. Our culture in and of itself that we live in is an obstacle to us contending for op optimal health. So first I wanna say it's all about mindset. Absolutely about mindset. And I wanna start by telling a little story. I recently had a friend who's also a coach call me and she said, I think coaching has made me a really good parent. And I said, girlfriend, I agree. I have learned so much through coaching that has equipped me to be an incredible parent. She said, I said, tell me whatever story you have to tell me. She said, my son, I think her son is six or seven, was cut from his travel hockey team. And he was so disappointed. And she said, I was so disappointed. Her husband was so disappointed. They were all so disappointed. And she did not want her little son's heart to break, but it was going to. And she realized, we talk about the obstacle being the way in Optavia. And she said, I realized this could either totally be a setback or it could be a setup for a comeback. So she had a conversation with her son and she said, son, We've been cut, you've been cut from the hockey team. And I know this is disappointing, but you know what? The best hockey team in the region has tryouts this next week. And because you are cut, you now have the opportunity to try out for this better hockey team. Because we have this obstacle of being cut, we now have the way to make it into this other team. Are you ready to go for it? Now, as a parent, we know we could have been like, man, this stinks. I'm sorry. Maybe we should try T-ball. But no, she was like, this is the way you're going to become an even better hockey player. This is the way you're going to compete with better teammates. This is the way you're going to compete against harder teams. Your goal of being a professional hockey player is the way. This obstacle is the way we're going to get there. He went and tried out for the other hockey team and made it. How cool is it that these tools that we're learning in our health journey can actually be used to empower and equip our children to be victors in life, to find victory in even their disappointments, find victory in even their failures. So let's learn these tools. Let's become professionals at them so we can impact the people around us with the right mindsets. So her mindset could have been failure, Instead, her mindset said, this feels like a failure, but I see it as a victory. One of our, one of our mentors, so there's two mindsets. Fixed mindset um, is something that we're naturally go to. We also talk about this as below the line um, in, in our culture. And so this is saying, you know, I can't. I can't get healthy. I, I'm not going to ask for help from my coach. There is a plate of nachos in front of me. I'm not going to get up from this table and call my coach for a 911 call. This mindset says, I always give up. There's no chance of me being successful. I am someone who gives up. The fixed mindset says, I don't like challenges. If it doesn't come easy, I'm not going to do it. And who knows? Raise your hand or, or shout something in the chat saying, if this health journey is easy for you, 
I want to give you a gold sticker because this was hella hard for me. This means it was simple because our program is simple, but it's hard. So if you don't like challenges, this journey is not for you. Some of us say, I'm not good at this, so I'm not going to even try. Some, I'm not good at saying no to ice cream, so I'm not going to even try. Some of us say, I demand perfection. If I can't be perfect, I'm not doing it. Well, how many of you know, how many of you have once or twice on this journey to becoming the healthiest version of yourself have slipped up, have eaten the thing that we didn't really want to eat because it didn't line up with our goals, but it tasted good. I mean, I, I know I have. How many, it's this fixed mindset says, if the going gets tough, I stop. How many, this mindset says, I'm either good or I'm not. But then there's the growth mindset. A growth mindset says, I was made to hard, do hard things. I can do it. I've done much harder things like this in the past. I've done much harder things than saying no to the fried seafood in the past. I can definitely say yes to the boiled seafood and shrimp. That's for people who are in the deep south, right? I said yes. So this growth mindset said, I'll ask for help. My first time out with a group of friends, they were peer pressuring me to eat the queso and the chips and drink the fancy cocktail, which I have since given up. And I remember running to the bathroom and calling my coach and saying, help, they're pressuring me to have a fancy cocktail and chips and queso. And she said, what are we, in high school? I said, I don't know, but it's a lot of pressure. She said, you go out there and you say, I am making my health and myself a priority. And I'm so thankful you're gonna be so supportive of me on this journey. And I lost 45 pounds because I learned to say things like that. And I learned to ask for help from my coach, the SOS call in the middle of appetizers. The growth mindset says, I'm always learning something new. Even when I face a disappointment or a failure, what feels like a failure, what my mind processes as a failure, I'm here to learn something new. And in this, we're focusing on new habits all the time. This fit mindset says, I may experience disappointment. I may even fail. I may fall flat on my face and eat double stuffed Oreos covered in chocolate on top of an ice cream sundae with whipped cream and a cherry. Whose mouth is salivating? <laughs> That's for the sugar addict. I may do this. I may fail, but I'm not going to give up. My health, myself, I am too important and my health is too important and too many people are depending on me to become the healthiest version of myself. I am not going to give up no matter what the disappointment or the failure may look like. And most importantly, the growth mindset says, how am I going to learn from this? One of our um, coaching mentors in Octavia she has a British accent, so I wish I could do it, but I'm really not good. She says, ask your obstacles a question. When you confront an obstacle in your path, when you confront that plate of chips and queso in front of you, you can look at it and say, well, hello, obstacle. What are you here to teach me? Well, hello, obstacle. How can I learn from you? And it may seem like that's just an inanimate object, but honestly, your temptation to eat that gives you an opportunity to decide what's most important to you. So what are some of the obstacles on our health journey? I put a few pictures here. Number one, what about eating out with your colleagues at lunch? Everyone else is getting the chimichanga and you're ordering the fajita salad or this is not your leaning green for the day, so you decide, I'm gonna drink water. The truth is, and one of my very first obstacles, again, another obstacle, they're all so clear to me, was time out with some people, and I decided that I was going to bring my own food. It was at her house, she had prepared this tea party, and I said, my health is worth fighting for, I'm going to risk offending her to become the healthiest version of myself. I called her. I said, I'm so excited to be there, but I'm going to need to bring, I'm going to choose to bring my own food because I have some health goals that I'm going to reach. And so I learned 
that my goals are just as important as other people's feelings. But I had to see that obstacle as a way to become the healthiest version of myself. I have down here a family dinner where they're all eating pizza. Well, guess what I bring when I'm going to any event? I learned during my health journey when I was asked to bring brownies to a dessert shower. Who has a dessert shower? I was asked to bring brownies to a dessert shower. I said, I appreciate that you're just having dessert, but could I bring a gigantic salad? The person said, I would really appreciate if you make brownies. I said, fantastic. And I brought a giant salad and guess what everyone ate? The salad. I chose to become the healthiest version of myself and I picked up brownies from the store. I think that's what I did. I may have made them, but I didn't lick them once and it felt like a massive victory. That fighting couple in the top. How many times are our emotions, the interactions with others, the tension is the obstacle for me because it made me want to go to the pantry and eat. What about this guy in the corner? Stress. Has anyone ever been the obstacle of stress standing before them? And they thought, all I want is carbs. All I want is a glass of wine. If you sit at that obstacle and you say, this stress, this obstacle, if I can learn to overcome stress, this is the way I'm going to become the healthiest version of myself. Stress is the obstacle. Learning to overcome that over and over creates a new habit and we become healthier and healthier and healthier as time goes, goes on. Baby showers, wedding showers, kids who are throwing tantrums, all are obstacles. I have six kids. When they are all losing it at 5.30 in the afternoon because they're starving and dinner isn't on the table yet, that's just an obstacle. You wanna know what I learned? I've got to eat some of my green before the kids go crazy. So my belly is full. So I am not craving peanut butter m &Ms, which are not even in my house because I've learned to overcome that obstacle. So what obstacles, I want to know right now, what obstacles are you about to face? Like think about the weekend ahead. Think about this week. What obstacle may come in your way? Is it an event? Is it an emotion? Is it a feeling? Is it a tension that's going on with a relationship? Because I'm about to give you some tools to overcome those obstacles. And I want you to have one specific obstacle in mind. Put it in the chat. If you're, if you're daring to be vulnerable, put that in the chat for accountability purposes. And let's talk about some key tools to overcome this. And I need water. Tool number one, curiosity. You know, it's interesting that the most of the tools that we use that we're empowered with and equipped with really are like given to us as a child. My children are so curious. Most of the time, the youngest children, like curiosity is like knocked out of them as they get older. My youngest children are so curious, it gets them in trouble a lot. And I depend on their guardian angels to protect them. They're, so I want you to approach the obstacle that you may have fa faced in the past. So this one, think about the past. This is also a great obstacle when you feel like you've had a fail, when you've eaten the double stuffed Oreo, or you've eaten the Fruit Loops, or whatever it is. The one way to overcome the obstacle in the future is to say, what happened? Not blaming and shaming and saying, man, I always do that, that fixed mindset, saying, I want to learn what happened. Well, I was super stressed. There was a lot of noise. The kids were being crazy. There was so much stress from work. I was getting a phone call from my boss. Everything felt like it was going insane. And the only thing that felt like it would solve the problem is alcohol. So what was missing? I didn't have a buffer. I forgot to turn my phone off during my hours where I'm supposed to be focused on my children. I didn't have a healthy option available. Well, what's next? So I guarantee if your obstacle is a fight with your husband, you're gonna have a fight again. It's just how marriage works. But can you grow and become the healthiest version of yourself when you face that? Can you not blame him for bringing ice cream into the house? Can you instead say, hey, 
he brought ice cream into the house. What happened? I ate ice cream, bottom line. It's not his fault. He didn't shove it in my mouth. What was missing? I didn't have a fueling ready. I decided to blame him instead of taking personal responsibility. What's next? Next time I'm gonna drink a bottle of water, I'm gonna go take a bath, I'm going to eat my fueling and I'm gonna go to bed. And not be mad at him, this is my journey. His journey is his journey, my journey is mine. So curiosity, approach it with curiosity instead of approaching it with uh, trying to say, what did you, what went wrong? What went wrong just creates blame. What happened says, it's just a fact, I ate ice cream. So that's to help with past ones. Tool number two, imagination. So now I want you to take that potential obstacle that you're about to face this weekend that you listed in the chat. What's the potential obstacle? Well, we're having a ton of people over this weekend and we're moving into a house. This is me, legit me. What do I really want? I really want to stay in fat burn. I want to be on our vacation, our three week vacation in the next couple weeks, feeling ridiculously amazing, having tons of energy to engage with my kids. I really want to stay on this path of integrity and make healthy decisions. What am I gonna say if people ask what I'm gonna do? Well, number one, they all need to know I'm a health coach now. So if you're considering health coaching, just know that's one of the best things ever. If you're a health coach, they're gonna start expecting you to make healthy decisions. They won't be pressuring you anymore. <laughs> so having people over actually gives me great accountability. What am I gonna do? I am gonna prepare a massive vegetable tray, which is my go-to. I'm gonna make sure we have lots of lean protein. And when it comes to dessert time, I'm gonna have Octavia brownies available for people along with ice cream bars for the children because I think you should still be able to have ice cream as a child. Why am I making this decision? And then I'm gonna revisit my why because my children deserve for, to have a mom who's full of energy, who loves to look into their eyes because I have the energy to engage with them. My children deserve to have, my husband deserves to have a flirty, fun wife who has energy at the end of the day to engage with him, hear about his day, and dream about what's next for our lives. Why am I making this decision? Not because I wanna be skinny, but because there's so many worthy reasons to fight for this. Now is it easier? I've planned, I've imagined the event. I've imagined what I'm gonna say. I've imagined what I'm gonna do. I'm committed to making the decision. Another way to do this, if you're going out to a restaurant, look at the menu beforehand. Imagine what you're gonna order. Um, plan in advance for this. And third, we have preparation. That's our third tool. How will the healthiest version of yourself, so this is planning for the future. A lot of times I have to stand right where I am and I have to pretend I'm walking into the future and I see myself, I'm standing as the fittest version of myself. I am lean, I'm muscular, I'm, I'm energetic. I mean, if I have this much energy and fat burn, just imagine how I am when I've lost this last 17 pounds. Y'all won't even be able to handle me. Um, I imagine myself and I say, how would the healthiest version of myself respond to this obstacle in the future? So sometimes you can't imagine the event because you're so new on this journey, right? You've never been to a baby shower without approaching the table and tasting everything, right? That was me. Baby showers were my favorite, it was all sweets. Sometimes we're early in this journey and we can't imagine how we're going to respond but you can prepare. And sometimes it's easier to say, re read your why out loud. If you don't have your right why written down, read it out loud. Who is depending on you to become that version? What will that healthiest version of yourself act like, look like, feel like? Imagine how the healthiest version of yourself will respond to this in the future. You know, I used to, I remember going while I was on my health journey to this restaurant with a friend who ran triathlons. She was super healthy. Oh, this was before I started my journey with Octavia. And I thought, whatever she's ordering, I'm ordering because I want a body like hers. So I could imagine I am like my friend and I could say, if 
I were my friend, what would I order when I go out to eat? If I were that, when I'm the healthiest version of myself, how will I handle that situation? Um, and then what new habits, break that down, what new habits do I need to establish today that will lead me to becoming that person? So one of my favorite questions, and there's a training called um, Above the Line that I did a couple of months ago in February. It's on the YouTube channel. And we talk about, well, if I could drink all my water, how would I drink all my water? If I could go to the movie theaters and not eat popcorn, how would I go? Imagine myself, prepare, bring my fueling with me to the, the movie theater, get the giant bottle of water at the movie theater. Maybe the healthiest version of myself would walk right into the movie theater and sit down and not stand outside and just look at all the candy. The healthiest version of myself, when I went to a baby shower, I imagined myself and I prepared and I said, I'm gonna tell the host I'd love to bring a veggie tray so I know that there's at least something that I can eat on that. When I um, went on vacation, I, I knew if I, we were going camping, my husband was preparing a campfire and he was feeding, he was making s'mores with the kids. I had no idea I would have this emotional reaction, but I cried because s'mores sounded so good. And I had already prepared myself and said, when I reach an obstacle, I'm calling my coach. I called my coach, I said, I was crying, sobbing, and she said, why are we crying? I'm like, she said, is everyone okay? You don't cry that often. I'm like, s'mores. Everyone is eating s'mores. And thank God I had already prepared myself that if this got too much, I am going to call my coach. That's the healthy habit I'm establishing. Called my coach. She said, are you tired? I said, yes. She goes, eat a s'more crunch bar. And then why don't you just go to bed? I'm like, okay. And I did. And I was victorious over the s'mores. I need someone else to be vulnerable and tell me if you have cried over a food, okay? I had, my friend called me crying over Fruit Loops the other day. So we've all done it, not all of us, only the special ones. So know that we have new habits um, that we need to create and imagining and preparing for the future helps us to create those habits in advance so that when the going gets tough, the tough call their coach. When the going gets tough, the tough drinks a bottle of water. This will not be easy. This will be hard, but you were made to do hard things. You have created habits and patterns. I have created habits and patterns for 35 years of my life. Those weren't gonna be broken and recreated overnight. We needed, I needed to equip myself with tools. Commit yourself to engaging in the habits of health system so that healthy mind is developing as the healthy body develops. You are going to show up differently and some people aren't gonna be okay with it because you used to split three desserts at dinner and they're gonna be upset that you're having a salad and not willing to split desserts. It is okay for others to be disappointed while you are in pursuit of becoming the best version of yourself. And you are going to experience feelings that are uncomfortable. We buffer feelings with food. We buffer feelings with sugar, with alcohol. We buffer feelings with this. So when you decide to give it up, the sugar up, the unhealthy habits up, you're going to feel feelings that are uncomfortable. And again, there's a, there's a habits of health call about that, that Joanna Mitchell and I did that's on the YouTube channel. You can do this. You were made to do hard things and you are worth fighting for. So I, again, am so thankful that you guys were on here tonight. We all face obstacles. I would love in the chat as we transition for you to just say one thing you learned or one thing you're gonna apply tonight. And thank you for allowing me to spend 30 minutes of you. I this audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.